Hello guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. And in today's episode, we're going to be comparing the three most popular arms in the JavaScript ecosystem. Now we're going to be specifically talking about um, Prisma, SQLize and Typeform, which I know many of you might have heard of it in the past. I've made tutorials on the three of them in my uh, YouTube channel. So if you want to check those out first, you can go ahead and do so. But for those who don't know, an arm is an object relational mapper, which basically um, allows us to translate database logic into a simple JavaScript code. So in this video, we're going to be looking at pros and cons for each of the three different ORMs. And also, more importantly, discuss specific use cases in which you might want to use one of them over the other. So if you're about to start working on your next big project, and you're unsure about which ORM you want to use, stick around for the video and I'll tell you in the end. And before we get into the video, if you could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it because it will help push my videos to more people. And I would be eternally grateful if you could do so. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. Okay, let's start right off the bat with Prisma, which is the arm that seems like everyone's talking about nowadays. Well, Prisma is uh, a modern and lightweight arm which supports TypeScript out of the box. Its syntax, in my opinion, is very clean and intuitive, and its TypeScript, its generated TypeScript types, makes it extremely safe to use in any application. This segues into the first pro that Prisma has, which is the fact that it has really good support for TypeScript. If you've watched my video on why you you should always be using TypeScript no matter what use case, uh, you would understand that TypeScript is extremely important in any kind of application nowadays. The only excuse for not using TypeScript, in my opinion, is either if you're making YouTube tutorials where people might not know TypeScript and might be more familiar with JavaScript, or if you are a beginner learning JavaScript, because it's totally understandable. And it's how I learned as well. But if you're anywhere near uh, intermediate to advanced, and you've been working for a while now, you should be working with TypeScript because it is necessary in any application. Now, not only does Prisma have really good support for TypeScript, but it also has a fantastic developer experience where they provide a lot of different software and features such as Prisma Studio, and even a visual interface for your own database. Now, I personally never used <laughs> Prisma Studio. So I can't really vouch for that. But I've heard about it. And I've seen people using it. And it looks kind of cool. But um, it's definitely an addition that you have to take into account. Now, the final positive thing I want to talk about related to Prisma is the fact that nowadays it's been gaining a lot of notoriety. Like people have been using Prisma in their own stack stacks. And it's been gaining a lot of traction because of how TypeScript has also increased in its use in the past year and a half, I would say I'm not the kind of developer that just likes to follow trends, because I think that um, it's not the best way to do it, especially in an industry where everything changes so quickly. This is clearly evident by the fact that it took a while for me to even make any videos on Next.js, because I really took my time to learn it to perfect it to understand uh, how to work with it and um, to then do it because I didn't want to just make a video on it because it was a trend. But at the same time, you have to choose technologies that are popular because when you run into any bug, when you run into any problem, having a big community online, a lot of questions on Stack Overflow, a lot of data on ChatGPT that you can ask for um, to solve your bug. And that's that's necessary because if you're using a like a, an unknown library or ORM out there, uh, and you run into a problem that no one has ever run into in the internet, how are you going to solve it? You're going to have a lot of trouble. So I think the popularity of Prisma nowadays is definitely something that should be taken into account. Now that can also be seen as a con in my opinion, because Prisma is actually newer compared to Typeform or SQLize. Um, I believe it was released in 2016. So maybe uh, it might be gaining a lot of traction and a lot of people talking about it now. But at the same time, there hasn't been enough time of a huge amount of people working on it to have as many resources similar to Typeform and SQLize. What I'm saying is, if you're going to be building a project that is for the future, maybe think about using something that you might see being projected to be more popular in the future, like Prisma. Now, what about Typeform? This one I really like to talk about because if you've seen my video on Typeform, you know that I really loved it. I believe Typeform is the most flexible type of ARM in that it can be used in both active records and data mapper patterns. Now, again, I want to emphasize that uh, maybe a big deciding factor for you might be the syntax. And I really enjoy Typeform's syntax. 
But one of the major pros for this specific ARM is that first it supports a very wide variety of databases out there. It is very flexible on the architectural pattern you, you prefer to use. And if you're working for tra with transactions, it has a very robust support for them. Now, although I do like the syntax, I do think that the learning curve can be a little bit harder than uh, SQLize and um, Prisma. It starts to specifically get hard when you get into a little bit more advanced stuff. Um, so I would say that that should be taken into account. It's not impossible to learn. None of this is impossible to learn. All of them are very similar in a lot of ways, but I was just pointing this out in case you're just looking for something quick to use and you want to learn something easy. I would actually say the easiest one to use is probably SQLize, but I'll get into that later. But Typeform is the hardest one in my opinion. And obviously the major negative with Typeform is the fact that although it does have support for TypeScript, it's not even close enough um, to what Prisma provides because Prisma was built with TypeScript in mind. I am not sure if Typeform was, but at least with the developer experience with the syntax notation, I know Prisma is fully complete completely supported, supporting TypeScript and Typeform, I don't see the same type of support. So that's definitely something you should take into account. Now, finally, we arrived at SQLize and SQLize, uh, let me know if I'm wrong. I'm not, don't quote me on this. I think it's the oldest one because the reason why I think that is because it's the first one that I've heard about. So in my view, I see it as the oldest one because back when I started coding, uh, at least using ORMs, not coding in general, but when I started using ORMs and looking to, to choose one, uh, SQLize was the biggest one. It was what everyone was using, or it seemed like it at the time. So uh, there's definitely a lot that I can talk about <laughs> with SQLize because I used it with so many courses and videos and, and projects that I've done in the past. So this is definitely something that I can talk a lot about. Now in its core, uh, SQLize is just a promised based uh, ORM that works in Node.js and it's it supports the traditional uh, promise based API requests for handling any kind of database operations. Now the two main benefits that I would say for SQLize and till this day I still think they are important to take into account although I don't use SQLize anymore. Uh, the two main benefits is the fact that it definitely has one of the biggest variety of database compatibility out there similar to Typeform. Um, and also the community. It's I, I believe it is the biggest community out there and because it is one of the oldest ones and it was massive back when I started. Um, so I never had any trouble like fixing anything when I've had trouble uh, with bugs on something like Prisma because I couldn't, I found it harder to find someone who had the same bug as me. When it's with SQLize, I didn't have any trouble whatsoever. Now the syntax annotation for SQLize really sucks in my opinion. It's very verbose. Uh, a lot of times to do a simple query, you have to write a lot of things. Um, it's definitely not as easy and as simple as something like Typeform and Prisma. So that's definitely something you should take into account. And the worst one is the fact that it doesn't really have any good support for TypeScript. I believe SQLize to be a very um, JavaScript based ORM uh, because that's what everyone used back then. But specifically for that, I think it is something that people have been steering away from because of how big TypeScript has become in the web developer community. Thing is, it doesn't matter if I tell you the pros and cons, uh, it's still very confusing to know when exactly you should use each of them. Now that's up to you. However, I am going to provide you my insight on when I would believe it would be best for you to use any of them. So I would say that um, this is how it's structured. I would put Prisma and Typeform together, but the way I would look at it would be if I'm working on something that I don't think will uh, take a long time um, or something that, uh, I won't be working that much in the future or something that will just last a specific amount of time, just a normal project. And I don't want to learn Prisma or I already know Typeform, I would choose Typeform. Now, if you're working with anything related to TypeScript, that is probably something that you want to build upon and continue working in the future, I would choose Prisma. So those two is it really depends on whether or not how you see the future of the web developer industry and on the fact that which of those you actually already know. If you already know Prisma, stick to Prisma. If you already know Typeform, stick to Typeform if you're interested in that. I would try to learn a little bit of Prisma, but I would still stick with Typeform because Prisma is, is one of my favorites. Now, you might be thinking, what about SQLize? Well, SQLize, I would say only use SQLize if you're working on a project that already uses SQLize and you're gonna be uh, working with it anyway. So like in a company that um, they use SQLize and you have to learn it to, to work or if you want to use a specific feature or a specific library that originates or is related to SQLize specifically. 
Now, in any other kind of situation, I would recommend Type Worm and Prisma for sure. Although I love Sequelize as well, I would say those two are better options. Now you might be asking, oh, what about? So now I know you might be thinking as well, like, oh, you didn't really mention uh, Micro Worm, or what about um, Objection JS, or what about Mongoose? Now those options are good, but first of all, Micro Worm and Objection JS are not as popular as Prisma, Typeform, and Sequelize. So that's why I think those are second plan to, 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 to the other options because most people out there would probably want to use the ones with the bigger community. So that's why I didn't really give too much attention, too much attention for those. And if you're asking about Mongoose, well, that's not actually an ARM. That's an actual ODM. It's a little bit different. So that's why I didn't, because specifically for MongoDB, so it's a non-relational database, but the options that I gave, although you do have support for Mongo for non-relational databases as well, they have a way more support as well for relational databases. So that's why I didn't mention Mongoose or anything related to MongoDB. So finally, after all of this review, which one would I personally choose? Well, if I were to start a project right now, I would have to go with Prisma. And it's obvious, right? It's obvious. I've been using Prisma for over two years, I believe. Um, and I've been enjoying it ever since. I did step back and use Typeform for one project. And I there was a period where I was like, oh yeah, Typeform is amazing. It's way better than Prisma. But then I got back to Prisma. It, it really depends on what 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 you're using in the moment, right? I, I personally love to code on whatever I'm coding in the moment. I always think it's the best thing in the world. But then I switch it and I hate to switch it up. But then when I do, I realize that that other thing also has a lot of features that I personally love. So that's why don't use my opinion as a fact, you know, if you want to use Typeform, use Typeform. If you want to use Prisma, use Prisma. If you want to use Sequelize, that's just a wrong opinion. <laughs> no, I'm joking, obviously. But uh, I, I'm saying like, choose whatever you think is the best option based on what you want by using as much knowledge as you can gain from this video or any other video out there. Uh, and then make your decision. That's that's my opinion. This is it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting twice a week. Um, if you're interested to see my channels, just put notifications on because uh, you it will let you know exactly when I post. If you want to check out all the gear that I use in my YouTube videos, those lights in the background, the camera, the light that I'm using, it's all in the description. A link to Amazon if you're interested in buying them. And yeah, that's that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time.